Hey guys, Dr. Tracy. Uh, let's continue looking at Python games. And the uh, chapter that we're covering this week is chapter 13, which is a project called Sonar Treasure Hunt. Sonar Treasure Hunt is going to use something called data structures. So your discussion this week is to explain what data structures are and how they're used and give some examples in Python. That's the discussion associated with it. There are two links that I've given you that describe data structures. So let's take a look at those first. This first tutorial is at datacamp.com, and it's going to give you an overview of what data structures are. But the description here says data structures are a way of organizing and storing data so that they can be accessed and worked with efficiently. So what we do is when we create data structures is we have ways to tie stuff together. So we have primitive data structures that hold groups of integers, groups of floating point numbers, groups of strings, or groups of Boolean items. And we've seen those data types before. Those create characters that can be stored as a primitive data structure. But then we start building data structures that have lists of items, like arrays, lists, tuples, dictionaries, sets, and files. And all of those things keep more information together. So you see, in data structures, primitive data structures are basic data types. But the non-primitive contain arrays, lists, tuples, dictionaries, etc. A data structure is a way that we can store information together so that we can uh, make use of that data and also retain its applicability to um, and, and relationship to uh, the other pieces of data. So I'm scrolling down to where it talks about lists and I'll get there. Um, so in this arrays and lists is what we're working with in this chapter. So when you create an array and a list, you're holding multiple ways of pieces of data together as one array and that becomes an object and so you can see that the type instead of being type boolean or type integer according to python it will be type array so lists in pythons are stored collections of heterogeneous items that means that they don't have to be the same um, they would be different different types you could have a string and a number these are mutable this is another word that comes up when talking about data structures when something is mutable, it means that you can change its content without changing its identity. So when you put something into a list, you're essentially storing a variable, but you're just storing a set of variables. We saw lists when using the hangman project earlier. But this heterogeneous, where we can have different types in there, shows a list that contains numbers and strings. And that's how we can create lists when working with Python. The other link that I've given you takes you to python.org and has a tutorial about data structures. And it shows that when you work with list, and the reason why we create list is because we can do things to the list, like append, add items onto it, insert items, remove items, uh, remove the last item, clear the items, count the items, sort the items, reverse the items, copy and so forth. So take a look at the functions that are associated with any array. And since arrays are created as objects, as data structures, all of these functions can be attached to any list that you create. So this chapter, chapter 13, the Sonar Treasure Hunt, is um, a chapter that's going to make use of this Cartesian coordinate system from the previous chapter. And then it's also going to use data structures to show where they are. This sonar treasure hunt is kind of the equivalent of the old battleship game, except for we're doing it as a text-based game. So we're going to be looking for using sonar. It's going to find if there is a treasure anywhere in the range, kind of um, listing that range according to a Cartesian coordinate system. So once this is drawn, you can say, would you like to be the instructions? But basically each one of these represents an X and a Y, so we can see what their position is. And it says there are 20 sonar devices and three treasure chests. Where do you wanna drop the next sonar device? So you drop the sonar devices to see what turns up. And then it will give you hints to show 
that it's at this distance and this this place. So the code that's coming from the treasure hunt is going to make use of both Cartesian coordinates and also a data structure which stores all the data of that board in a range. And each of the ranges will have a random either this symbol or this symbol to kind of make it look like it's water. It's random. So it comes up to draw the board as a data structure. And then it shows the data structure by um, printing the numbers across the top of the board, printing the numbers along the sides, so you know what each position is. And then it creates a list of chess that it will assign an X number to and a Y number to so that you know where they're going. Oh, wait, an X number to, a random number between 0 and 59 and a Y coordinate too. So you know where that position is going to be. That creates a data structure that holds the position of each of the chess. And then we're gonna to check to see if it is on the board as the player moves. There's also a function that will show the instructions on how to play. So let's look at the game itself. It starts off by creating a new blank board and then it does three random chess on the board. It draws the board and it sets an array called previous moves, even though there's no value in it. While they have not, um, while the sonar devices, which is like turns, is greater than zero, it will show the sonar devices and the chess statues. Um, when you have, when you have no more um, sonar devices left, the game is over. Otherwise, you input an X and a Y. And at the point you input an X and a Y, it's going to put that in previous moves to show that that move has been made. Then it's going to use the make move function to check the board and the chess and the X and the Y and see if there is a chest on the board at that X and Y position. And if it's equal to false, you keep going. If it's equal to true, then it will tell you you have found a sunken treasure. And it will update the map to show that a sunken treasure is in that spot and update the board. Now, when you find all the chests, it will say great job and add a break to say that you're done. But each time you take a turn, it takes your sonar devices and subtracts one. If you get to zero sonar devices, but you haven't found all the sunken treasures, it will give you a, a message to say you've run out of devices and here's where the chests were. So have fun with creating this data structures sonar treasure hunt. The assignment for the, the class still working with our Python games assignment. This is going to be the last one that you'll include with the project. So the project three Python games is going to do a sonar treasure hunt. But all I'm asking you to do is change it. Now here's where it gets crazy because I'm not asking for a specific change, but I want you to think how you could redesign this game that make it more fun, more interesting, different, whatever you want to do. And then just tell me what you did. So that's the last piece of this Project 3 Python games, which is due next week. All right. I hope that helps. Talk to you soon, guys.